Get a load of this second grade math problem posted by the parent to r slash homework help. How do you answer this? The problem in question, what is four plus eight? Now you might think this problem isn't funny, obviously the answer is 12, but in fact, this is not a multiple choice question. It's a short answer question. This is basically just a figure, which is part of the real question. Hassan chose D as the correct answer. How did Hassan get his answer? That's right, Hassan says four plus eight is 11. Why does Hassan think this? This is perfect meme material in the family of weird school math problems. They start off normally, nice and easy question, and then they give you a twist you'd never expect. Here's an easy question you could get right. Now, how did this dude get it wrong? And it's like, what do you mean? I know four plus eight is 12. How am I supposed to know why Hassan thinks it's 11? Well, guess what, nerds? You might think you're hot stuff because you know that four plus eight is, I mean, 12. But there actually is a good answer to this second grade math problem. And the question right above it gives us a little bit of a clue as well as the footer for this worksheet. Here's the dealio. This is about mental math strategies for addition. And above the given problem, we can't see the question, but we can see what the student is doing. They appear to be counting, maybe from 10 up to 19. Perhaps the question was something like nine plus 10. And how do little kids do addition? Easy, they count on their fingers. So we start with nine in our heads and then we count up using our fingers 10 times. So I have nine and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 10 fingers. So I've added 10 to nine. There's my answer. With a strategy that simple, how could Hassan have screwed up four plus eight? Instead of putting four in his head and then counting five on his first finger, then six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, he probably put four on the first finger and counted up from there. If only someone could have caught him in the act, it probably would have looked something like this. <sighs> Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, Hassan got a really simple problem wrong, but his error is not one exclusive to inexperienced second graders. It is in fact a type of error so famous that it has its very own Wikipedia page, and it's called an off by one error. And it's not just about having an answer that's off by one. For example, if I say that four times one is equal to five because I accidentally add the numbers instead of multiplying them. It is an error and I am off by one, but it's not really an off by one error. An off by one error generally takes a form similar to accidentally including the start, like Hassan might have done in his addition, accidentally including the initial position eight as one counter. Or instead of accidentally including the start, an off by one error can take the form of accidentally not including the end or of course it can be done vice versa. Now, if the off by one error name is a little bit too on the nose for you, there is a cuter name for this error that comes from a simple question that often tricks people. The question is if you are, well, no, you are building a fence with fence posts that are 10 feet apart. You want the fence to be a hundred feet long. How many fence posts do you need? Have your answer? It's all too easy to just say, okay, 100 feet, we need one fence post every 10 feet. So do the math, 100 divided by 10, and that's gonna be 10 fence posts. But of course, if you just sketch it out, you can see the error. Here's my long fence with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 fence posts. Clearly, we've neglected to include one at the start. And again, notice this isn't a computational mistake. It's true that 100 divided by 10 is 10. The issue is an error in the logic, which is by necessity off by one, or in this case, off by one fence post. Hence the more amusing name for this mistake, the fence post error. 
And even if you're aware of this fence post error, you always need to be careful in every new situation. Maybe in a particular situation, an initial fence post isn't actually necessary because of the presence of a wall on one side. That would make the logic we previously employed correct. Or changing things up more, maybe there's also a wall on the other side, and so no final fence post is necessary either. Maybe the fence post is going to go all the way around and complete a loop, and so in that way the first fence post can also be regarded as the last. You must stay vigilant out there, my friends. The infamous fence post error actually goes back thousands of years. Robert K. Munyao is an associate professor of computer science at Fordham University, and he has a little write-up on who was first to describe the fence post error. He lists this on his page as part of his frequently asked questions, which is kind of funny frequently asked who first described the fence post error, he says he doesn't know, but he has a good candidate. He hasn't done any deliberate research on this topic, but he happened to encounter a description of the fence post error in the classic On Architecture by Vitruvius, the Roman architect who inspired da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Vitruvius lived in the first century BC, and in his treatise On Architecture, he describes in simple terms how many equally spaced columns must be used along the length and the breadth of a temple if the length is twice the breadth. Some people will say if the length is twice the breadth, then the length will need twice as many columns as the number of columns that are along the breadth. But Vitruvius says those who do this have erred and make one more intercolumniation than should be used. For example, if we have four equally spaced columns along the breadth of our temple, then there are certainly three spaces between the columns. And if the length is to be twice the breadth, then we will need twice as many spaces between columns along the length. So we would need six of these intercolumnial spaces. But if we just double the number of columns along the breadth to get the number of columns along the length, well that would give us eight columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we end up with seven spaces between columns, which is one more than we were supposed to have. Of course, the issue is that in the breadth, not every column caps off an intercolumnial space, so to speak. It's only after the first column that those intercolumnial spaces begin to get created. So it's the number of columns after the first one that needs to be doubled to get double the amount of intercolumnial space. In other words, to properly calculate the number of columns along the length, we must take the number of columns along the breadth, then subtract that first column, and then double this, and then add the first column back in. Since we do need it, we just don't want to double it. So for a temple with equally spaced columns where the length is twice the breadth and the breadth has four columns, the length will need four minus one times two plus one or seven columns, which of course you can see in this advanced graphing paper index card schematic. Of course, it's impossible to say if On Architecture by Vitruvius from the first century BC does in fact contain the earliest description of the fence post error or not. With all the mathematical and architectural writings that have not survived time, or maybe have and just are yet to be discovered, we can only hold to this as a possible first description. It does seem like a good candidate, but when you consider the fact that Dr. Monnier found this without even setting out to research the issue, it's not hard to imagine there might be some other obscure reference to the error, perhaps in another form, in an even older document. A little bit of my own research turned up no earlier descriptions of this error, but if you can find any, please share with the class. Let's just finish with a couple more examples of how ordinary people, not just nerds, encounter the fence post error. So often, people disagree when describing days. Maybe Marcus and Dom are having boba 
a tea together on Monday morning, and they plan to go ice skating on Thursday afternoon. Marcus confirms with Dom, saying, I'll see you in four days. But Dom is confused and says, I thought we were going skating in three days on Thursday. Of course, they both know they're skating on Thursday, but they're counting their days differently. Marcus is counting the present day, which still needs to pass, one, two, three, four days, but Dom is not. A classic case of the fence post error. I saw this example on betterexplained.com. You're a hotel custodian. Your boss wants you to vacuum floors 8 to 11 today from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And well, you're in luck. That's some really convenient math, right? You just have to vacuum one floor per hour. Ah, if only. It is not so. You can do simple subtraction 11 minus 8 to get the correct number of hours, three hours because you're calculating a distance between times. But with the floors, you're counting labeled objects. So for them, 11 minus eight isn't really relevant. You're not trying to count a distance or a span of anything. You're just counting floors, which happen to be labeled eight, nine, 10, 11. These four floors of the hotel just as well could have been named pigeonhole principal t-shirt available exclusively at mathshin.com, Euler and the Seven Bridges hoodie available exclusively at mathshin.com, Tomei's function Under Armour t-shirt available exclusively at mathshin.com, and optimal packing pullover available exclusively at mathshin.com. Then would you calculate the number of floors by doing optimal packing pullover available exclusively at mathshin.com minus pigeonhole principal t-shirt available exclusively at mathshin.com? Of course not. The fence post error is perhaps most commonly encountered by programmers. For example, in Python, the range function returns a list of whole numbers less than the argument. So range of five, for example, would return this list of whole numbers numbers, all those whole numbers that are less than the argument 5. And often programmers will use this function to count iterations in a loop. So to get five iterations of something, they might write for i in range of five, and then give some instructions that are to be completed in this loop. If they're just using range of five to count through the iterations, then that's simple. Put in the five and you'll get five iterations. But if the for loop actually needs to act on the numbers that are coming from the range, it may be an issue that this number i would stop at four. Range of five doesn't actually contain five. The programmer, of course, needs to know that this function goes from zero to one less than the argument, and not from zero to the argument. Failure to account for this sort of thing can result in disastrous fence post errors. And before anyone corrects me, yes, I know this isn't exactly how the range function works in modern versions of Python, but that's unimportant for this point. Anyways, let it be known that Hassan is in good company. His error has been made many times before and will undoubtedly be made many times in the future. So this second grade math problem is not so bad. Obviously, the second grader is supposed to recognize that Hassan has made a fence post, or off by one error. Listed as CWE193 in the Common Weakness Enumeration System, this common error results when the user fails to account for an initial or edge case. Easy. <laughs> I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and untucked the cable If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits why you're so, so